Hello, everyone, and welcome to Scan to BAM, Modeling and Revit. My name is Juliana, and I work in marketing here at MicroCAD. And today's presenters are Peter Brutner, our Applications Specialist, and our Account Executive, Luis de la Cruz. Um, at today's webinar, we will introduce and explore Scan to BIM with Esri, SiteScan, Autodesk, and Leica technology. Um, throughout the webinar, you can ask a question at any given point on the left-hand corner. You can ask uh, Peter to revisit a step or ask any questions. This is your time, and we want you to make the most of it. And in the upper left-hand corner, you will find links to our social media and website. Um, also, make sure to check our YouTube channel there. We post all of our webinars at the end, so you can share with colleagues or watch it on your own time. And without further ado, we'll pass it on to Luis. Hi, Luis. Hello. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Juliana. And uh, let me just quickly share my screen here. And tell me, Juliana, when you when you see my side. Yeah, we see him. Okay. So, hello everyone again. My name is Luis. I work as a support guy for all the sales teams in uh, MicroCAD, uh, especially when it comes to scanning and reality capture, scan to beam technologies and services. So, I'm very excited to have this uh, space with you today. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain you very quickly an overview. It's like a paintbrush of the whole process when it comes to scanning, uh, processing, modeling, and you know operating the data. Okay, as you can see on your screen, there's a process that we follow uh, when when we're doing a reality capture, whatever the project is. And so the first part, as you can see, is the uh, reality capture, the scanning. And as uh, most of you probably already know, we work with Leica Geosystem uh, as the manufacturer for our terrestrial and aerial scanners. Uh, as you can see, the, let me just uh, get the point there. Hold on a second. Um, when you see the uh, terrestrial scanners, we work with the RTC 360, BLK 360, so on. Uh, and their applications, uh, platforms for registration, Register 360, TrueView, so on. Uh, on the on the aerial scanners uh, technology, we work with uh, Leica as well, and um, uh, they have a BLK to fly scanner. And you know, when we're talking about the technologies, the photogrammetry, lidar, uh, Peter is going to talk to you about that more in a little bit more in detail, but. You know, just wanted to picture that on the on this slide. Uh, the second step um, in the process, as as you can see, is the the after the capture and the registration of the data, uh, we need to model it uh, and process it. And so it all depends on each customer's needs. Uh, your customer is going to probably require the data to be completely modeled into Revit or into Civil 3D. Uh, or simply into a two-dimensional uh, drawing. So depends on depending on those needs, that's how you're going to model the data on the point cloud. Okay, so there's many options there. And Can every please, project. I think we're not seeing the right screen at the moment. No. Um, uh, first in the diagram, and then another one. It says three. Let me try again. Let me stop sharing, and now I'm going to share again. You see it? You see it there? Yeah, now we see it. Okay. That's the two PC um, process and model, right? Is that better? Yep, thank you. Very good. Sorry about that. Um, moving on, uh, when it comes to modeling, we follow the uh, standards recommended by the American Institute of Architects. Uh, when it comes to LODs, uh, mostly uh, the cost, you know, when it comes to design and as built, uh, customers require anywhere from LOD 200, uh, 300, 350, 
that's the you know majority of the project needs but obviously we can we can work with any uh, detailed standard and finally the operation uh, the consumption of the data uh, the storage uh, you know what you know how many people the data is going to be shared you know how people are going to collaborate uh, during the pre-construction the construction if, if we're talking about a digital twin so on so again every project is different and now Peter is going to tell you a little bit more about the technology in detail and about the modeling itself. Peter, go ahead. Well, hello. Thank you for attending. Uh, just a little bit about myself. I'm uh, an architect. I fly airplanes. I fly drones. I use I do scanning from the ground. So we've been using all this technology for quite a while and enabling our clients to use this technology because you may want to do this yourself if you do enough of this scanning and we can certainly show you how to do this. I'm going to share my screen right now as we... Let me see this entire screen and here we are. And we're going to start the show here. Great. Everybody see my screen? Yes, we can. Excellent. Just wanted to do a sound check. So we're going to be using three different components. Site scan, which is a drone-based scan using drones, and that is by ESRI, the leaders in, in GIS. Autodesk products, including Revit, and Leica technology, which is including both hardware and software. There are two techn three technologies, really, we're going to be looking at. First is aerial photogrammetric scanning, typically done by drones, could be done by an airplane. You fly over the subject, you capture as many overlapping images as you can, and you have to set it up so that there's enough overlap, and enough different po photographs look at the same image to create a uh, point in the point cloud. This is extremely good for large areas, challenging terrain where you couldn't possibly go around with a uh, tripod-based equipment. You can typically get, typically get a half-inch pixel accuracy at uh, 200 feet, and you can link to GIS data through ArcGIS. So to go quickly through this, you will start off by getting hundreds of high-resolution photographs. Every point that's mapped will be seen from three views. The data exports, you can get an orthomosaic TIFF. This is an aerial plan photograph, very accurate, very huge, and very useful. And this is the only technology that will give you that. So if you need an aerial view that is up to date, that's important. It also will put out contours in DXF and other formats, point clouds. And here is where we're, what we're using mostly here. An LAS point cloud can be di inserted directly into Autodesk Recap Pro or into Leica software. So Leica can work on uh, photogrammetric uh, data too using different software that they create. It'll also create 3D meshes. So analyzing the data, first of all, we can zoom in and out of a very high resolution orthomosaic image. This is using the web, web, web app. We can look at where all the photographs are and see each photograph in detail. And that's a wonderful way of documenting things. We create contours, but as well, we create quantify volumes of cut and fill. And we can view volume reports and all that. Very useful for contractors. We can also measure distances, heights, and areas. So once you've scanned it, you just open the site you know, on, on the site scan web app and you can tell areas and uh, heights and distances very easily. You can also cut a section through the site very quickly so you know what, what, what's going on. And finally, with the, the site scan data, you can bring it into ArcGIS, which is a world-class uh, software used by probably every town in the country. And the, here's where you combine what you scanned with traffic, infrastructure, lot lines. You can know exactly who owns this lot what the service of traffic is on this street and that street, lots of other information that your clients will very be, will be very interested in. So it's a much better service than just scanning. 
So that is uh, photogrammetric. Now the second is LIDAR scanning, fixed or moving scanners. We feature the tripod-based Leica 3, RTC 360, which we think is the best in class, and the BLK2 Fly drone, which is a fairly new drone, and uh, has gotten extremely good reviews. All we have to do with this is to capture any time it sees a point and it puts out up to two million points per second, that point is recorded. So we don't have to see that point from any other point of view, but we do need to get enough overlap. These are extremely good for interior spaces or small to medium sized areas. A single building, for example, is very good. Typically go under an acre and the accuracy can be within an eighth of an inch or better. So it's highly accurate. And the types of data we generate are, to begin with, an LGS file, that's a Leica Geosystems file, which is what we bring into Revit using Cloudworks. There are a no, number of viewer files, and you can actually view the LGS file with a free viewer, so you can give any of your clients a free viewer to view their point cloud. We also put out points in all of the standard point types, PTS, LAS, PTX, E57, the third part is the software that makes it work, because that's of equal importance to the scanning hardware. And we are showing you today Cloudworks for Revit. It also works in AutoCAD, Navisworks, and MicroStation. And this is what really makes the workflow easy when you're going into CAD. So we're starting off with just three different ways of acquiring the data. There's a ground-based scan, a photogrammetric drone scan, and a LIDAR scan, scan from the air. So we're starting off with a uh, LIDAR scan to Revit, which was placed on the ground near a bridge. Now we are looking at a Revit uh, window. And you'll notice that the point cloud has already been brought in. And I'm clicking on True Space, Open True Space, because as soon as I click on true space and click on an element in the model, it's going to bring up the viewer. Now this is a viewer that is showing within AutoCAD. So why is this cool? Well, for one thing, we can easily navigate our model, get to any view we want to. Right now we're looking at it from any particular point of view, but we could also decide to, uh, and you notice as we change the model, we've created the view. So I'm going to move around a little bit until we see the view we want. And create a view that we can uh, let's kind of look around. We, we want to actually choose a few elements in the model. And again, here we are. We just we changed our, our, our true space 3D view. And we're going to be interesting. You notice I'm clicking on it. It can see certain items. Well, we're going to look at uh, the bridge and see if there are some other items we might like to uh, model. So there is a thing called a picker. And we can look at pipes and columns and steel beams. And in this case, we want to fit steel. So we use a steel catalog. So we're not just guessing. It's a US steel catalog. We say, yep, use a steel catalog, and we're going to make a pick. And we're going to pick on one end of, a, of an object and another end of an object. And as soon as it's clicked on that, it says, OK, is this what you want? It thought this was the best match. May not be. This is where you, the user, can look at the different possibilities. Or you may know for a fact there was an HP 12 by 62 or whatever. But it knows that these are the kinds of sections that we're working with. So we look around at a few different possibilities. But what you're looking at is the point cloud and the superimposed steel section. So this is a really good way to know that what you got was accurate. And is right accurate right down within an eighth of an inch. So we, we know we're doing pretty well here. I just turned off the point cloud so you can see this. Now, this is a Revit BIM element, and you can drag the ends to the corners. So if you want to bring it right to the uh, gusset plates or anything else, easy to do. And right now, I'm looking at another portion of the model, because we can easily create section views. 
And uh, so we can look at the different section views if we want to work with them. We may want to create another uh, element just to make sure that we have all the pieces. Now, again, I would probably co co uh, collect one element of each type and then just drag it into place because you don't have to choose of identical elements. You don't have to do them all. So it, you do want to get the right elements in the, in the model. So here we are looking at one of the uh, girders and look at how easily that con conformed with the point cloud. So we're feeling pretty good about that. Yep, that was a vertical, that was a horizontal element. We can pull it out. And we can go through and do the rest of the whole bridge this way. But I just wanted to show you that the picker is a wonderful way of using objects which are known and creating BIM objects. So these aren't just models, these are BIM models. The next one is a steel arch bridge, which is a photometric scan to uh, Revit. And th in this case, I want to show you how you bring the model into Revit. So looking at Revit, we click on CloudWorks, we say we want to open an LGS file. And we set, we, it tells us what we need to know. We tell it that we want it to go to the right user coordinate system. That's very important. So it doesn't show up in the next county. And now we say, OK. And we don't have to wait too long. This is real time. It suddenly came up. So we can look at this bridge. Now, this is not a bridge that you would want to capture from the ground. It's real hard. We're going to look at a view of it in plan. And we'd like to sort of show how do we break it up into different views. And I'm going to click above it. And I can click below it. And as you can see that we've done, and I look at it from a different view, so we have a three-dimensional view. Sometimes with Revit, you have to click it once or twice. So we have this model. Now, again, we can zoom in on it. We can cut section planes anywhere we want to. Here we're looking at it from the south. And again, to get into true space, we just click on it, click on the item. And next thing you know, we're looking at it in true space again. So I'm going to try to speed this up a little bit so we can move in beyond. But here's the nice thing. We're in Revit, remember? This is just the true space viewer in Revit. But when we peel away this window, we'll see underneath it, we've got a Revit view. There we are, Revit view. Not too shabby. So it shows no matter how we captured it, we can use this form to uh, work at it in Revit very easily. The third one is a quick little view at a cell tower. Again, you're not going to get a cell tower from the ground. Now, we could have flown our drone around it, but we wanted to make a LiDAR scan because we have other parts of the building are done in, in LiDAR, and we want to do this with the cell tower. So here we are looking at this model. This is in Revit. We're just simply looking at it a view. And uh, we're going to bring in the true space and move around it. Find the view that we want to get and say, okay, yes, that's our view in Revit, so on and so forth. So again, you can get views that are totally parallel, particular, perpendicular, whatever, and very quickly, you have a quick way into doing a model. Now, that's one way of acquiring things. The second thing is context. As I mentioned before, you don't always want to model everything. Sometimes you want to get the context so that when you do your BIM model, which is of the particular thing, this contractor had a stair to build. Architect already had the plans for the building, but they were built. And they weren't built exactly according to plans. Never are. 
So we need to know what the existing conditions were for this BIM stair model. So here we are. Now we're looking at the clipping manager. We can look at different clippings of our model to see how they relate. That's the fourth level where the stair comes up to. Let's look at another clipping. We can uh, look at a uh, level three area and turn off the other one. And we can now see that that's what it looks like, how it comes into level three. And we can also do a section box and turn off level three. So what we're looking at is a section through the model. And now we go in Revit and take a section. So here's a section of this model. Maybe want. Remember, you always have Revit, and what we need to do is find the right section. And then, now you'll notice right now, level three was also on, so it was limiting the view we got. So we want to turn off level three so we can see everything that's in the section box. Aha. Very important. We need to make sure that that steel fits precisely where it needs to. Because of the scan, we were able to provide all of the information they needed to and then bring the BIM model in and see that it really fits. We tested it in place before they had to ship it over to the, build, to, the, uh, to the building. Also, underneath that floor, it also matches up with a beam that it straddles. We needed to know where that beam was in modeling it. You can't even see it from the same view, but this is a scan, it's three-dimensional, and everything is in its right place. So what we've been able to do is take a very difficult and expensive stair and bring it in to the existing conditions. And we know that our building, our BIM model, which in this case was modeled in Inventor, brought into Revit. But basically, we know that it's going to fit. And indeed, they built it and it fit. So that was a good story. So let's just go into uh, something else. And that's urban context. The architect had a very dubious planning board and uh, zoning board. And a whole bunch of people wanted to know, is this big? Because this building was going to be a little too big for the city, some people thought. but. Let's see what's going on here. Hmm. So what we're looking at is the building in the context of the city. Different views, but the context was created by drone. And so we brought the model into the city. People could look at it. What you'll notice is that there's a setback so that the building did not seem to be six stories looming over the, the, the street, it looked like it was four stories, which is like the other buildings. And this was able to make the case. But we can cut sections through it, see how it looks compared to other buildings next to it. And so we're looking at a building in an urban context, which is what, so the, it's BIM, but the BIM has come into an existing conditions. This is a task that very many people need to do, and it's a good thing to do before you apply for building, but before you, you uh, look for your permits, you want to make sure everybody's going to like it. So, coming around, looking at an elevation we have, an elevation of view. And Doing for time, I think we're doing well. I need to move up a little bit faster, so I'm going to just go to the next thing here. And this is a lidar scan to BIM. Now, this is a building that we modeled entirely from a scan that took 30 minutes. 30 minutes. We did. We you can see those four four scans. 
and we're looking around the scan. Have the, oh no, sorry, that was. Sorry, guys. Now you can notice, now we can also look at a point cloud in grayscale. If I'd done it in color, we'd seen color as well. Or we can look at a heat shield to show that the things that are brightest are the where, where we have the most points. So again, we looked around the whole building. And uh, we wanted to capture we want to look at a section box. So how do we look at that building through different sites, uh, different uh, clipping planes? And uh, there's a section box. We can do it from a uh, typical frame. Then we can Does somebody uh, have a phone? Is this somebody's phone? So what we're looking now is this is how we model in Revit. Now, yes, we can choose things, but if we have a if we can get a plane at exactly the right point, here's a difficult thing to do, which was modeled very quickly in Revit. We could see that the steel that we modeled is exactly overlapping the point cloud, so we know we're accurate, and we could pick beams. We could pick those uh, beams. We also looked at the uh, frame, all of that. Now here's a case where we modeled a, a hoop, but we've actually modeled it when it's previous location. And then from that model, we're able to create in Revit, but you can see how accurate we are able to model using the site scan. Now, here, this goes on a little longer as we pick some ducts, but I think you already know how to pick ducts. But the end of the story is, this is a Revit rendering using Enscape of the model. Everything here is a rendering from a Revit model, and this is what we modeled. It is precise. There's no way you could have gotten it any more precise with a measuring stick. And it was done in a fairly short time. I think I spent less than a week on this. So if there are any questions, I pass it over to you, Juliana. Thank you, Peter, for that wonderful presentation. And as a reminder for everybody, you can ask a question on the left -hand corner. And we have questions coming in. The first one is, what is the difference between LIDAR and photogrammetry? photogrammetry? Okay, here's a very quick. Photogrammetry is a pretty old science. It shows if you have three images of an item, if you see a point from three different photographs, you know where it is in space. You can calculate its location. But if you don't see it from three points, at least, you can't see it. So photogrammetry means you have a lot of overlapping photographs, and that's processed. There are a lot of different processors. SightScan uses a number of them. There's Pix4D, there's a whole lot of others. And from that, you create a point cloud. So that's really what it is. You take the point cloud and work it. Now, LIDAR, the scanner is sending out light and it's coming back and it's capturing how long it took to get there. It's also looking at the colors of it and everything else. So every time it sees a point, got that point, move on. So you can get millions of points. And that's why with that bridge, it was so easy to select any piece of steel because there's enough points, there was no doubt. Hopefully that answers the question. Next. Yep. Thank you so much, Peter. Um, next question is, um, I hear about meshing point cloud files. What is the advantage of it? There are a number of them. For one thing, the mesh is already kind of a 3D model. And you can bring meshes into Inventor, into a lot of different software. Sometimes you just want things, something that stands in for the thing you're doing. Typically what we will do is we will mesh portions of a building or pieces of equipment, but you could mesh whole whole buildings. And uh, I've created some meshes that are not too bad. SightScan does a pretty darn good job of creating meshes in a number of different formats. Some are better than others. 
Also, if you bring your point cloud into recap, there is also an engine in recap pro that will create meshes. So that's the advantage of meshes. It's just, it's not a bunch of points. It's something quite tangible that you can use. Not as accurate as uh, a real model, but it's pretty close. Next. Thank you. Next question. Um, what What is the recommended approach for capturing interior and exterior of a three-story building for a rehab work? Well, I, I'd say you'd probably be three, 3D story. You could take a uh, ground-based scan. I, I would want to use a ground-based scanner anyway, like an RTC 360. And I would capture uh, capture views all around the exterior. And then I'd go into the doorways and start capturing the interior and get enough views so that you can match the exterior and the exterior. And then you keep on taking what each setup uh, it sh will, sh will show a spherical amount of points that you see from one point. And you go to the next point, and the next point, make sure you have enough overlap and go upstairs. And by the end of the day, you've probably got 100 scan, 100 points. And uh, then you process those into a point cloud. That would be my, my suggestion. If you only wanted the exterior, then I would probably save a lot of time and fly it in a drone. It all depends what you need. Got it. Um, next question from Stephen. Um, what add-ons in Revit were you using to select steel members and to ar archive the true space views? Uh, would you say that again? What add-ons in Revit were you using to select the steel members and to archive, I think, um, the true space views? Well, you don't really archive the three true space views. The true space view, when you create a true space the view, you, you create a Revit view. If you really like that view, I'm you'll sorry, just do it. I'm sorry, achieve. To achieve. Oh, to achieve. Well, first of all, true space just looks at the model. By the way, does somebody have a phone going on in the background? Because I hear a phone singing. If everybody mutes themselves, who is, can speak, it'll probably go off. Well, first of all, what you do, you uh, true space, you click on a, on a piece on the point cloud and it opens up the true space viewer. You, mod you, you can move around in the viewer and every t everywhere you move in the viewer, it creates a true space view port in Revit. So once you like that viewport, if you want to, you can rename it and then go create another viewport. So if you like certain viewports, you can do it that way. So that's how you achieve the viewport. Now to select an item in CloudWorks, there is the picker. The picker will look at things like ducts and walls and steel and columns. And uh, every t you tell it what you want it to pick. It then asks you do, you, do you want me to guess at it or do you want me to use a catalog? So as we're doing with, dealing with BIM, we'll use an American catalog, like the United States Steel Catalog. We'll click on it. If it's a duct, we only have to click on one piece of it. If it says it's a steel, we have to click on two ends. It says, oh, I see a steel here. And you saw what it did. It suddenly brought it up. So that's how we achieve that. Then we make, the, we make our best intelligent guess. But remember, if we were wrong about a W12 by 58 and it was a 52, this is a Revit. Just click on it and say, be a 52, and you're good. Anyway, next. Next from Lester, um, on the LiDAR scan, how do you not have the person in the scan who is scanning the job? You can do two things. First of all, you step respectively behind it where, where, or in a place that doesn't matter if it does see you. You can walk around the scanner, but that's basically it. I have many scans of where I'm sitting somewhere in the background. It just doesn't get in the way. As long as I'm not blocking something I need to model, it really doesn't matter. Okay. And I'll say um, one next. other thing about that. The other thing that Leica has done with the RTCs is that if the sun is out and you're scanning outside, you don't have to use an umbrella or something to shield the scanner from the sun because guess what? It knows how to deal with it. So even looks up at the sun, it doesn't bother it a bit. Next. <sighs> next, again from Lester. Um, is Cloudworks a subscription-based service? Yes. 
it is subscription or uh, or you can buy the uh, a perpetual license. Both are available from Leica. Got it. And another question. How are custom families modeled in Revit from the scan like the basketball hoop? Well, uh, basically like you do anything else. You just, uh, you scan it and uh, you create it and you send it out as a family. It's, it's Revit guys, that's all it is. It's just Revit. Okay. So, yeah. Sorry, next question. Um, more than locations, does the scanner have the possibility to identify different type of elements on it? Example, if I have a bunch of pipe, which is sanitary pipe, which is gas, and like no. that. All it's doing is looking at stuff and capturing it. It hasn't any idea what that stuff is, just a point. The, now, when, now, normally when you look at stuff and one of our clients has, has bought a scanner and they scan their name EP firm, so they'll see the pipes in the existing situation, they want to build new ones, they know this is a supply pipe, they know that is a return pipe or duct or whatever. So they'll scan it, they'll select its size, and then they'll assign it in Revit to what it is. But the scanner doesn't know a thing about that. Okay. Thank you. Um, and as a reminder for everybody, if you want to learn uh, any of these topics in details, you can always take a custom training with Peter or someone else on our team. Um, we also offer group classes online. Um, Peter, if you can go to the next slide, yes. please. Oh, the other thing I will mention is that when you do buy a scanner from us, most people will ask for a little bit of mentoring. We've been very successful in helping people with their first project and actually walking them through it and being there to help them. And here's how you can contact us, but back to you, Juliana. <laughs> yes, there is our, our contact information. Um, we will be sending an on-demand recording um, of this webinar for the ones who couldn't assist and the ones who did as well. We will also, um, as I mentioned before, I will be uploading this to our YouTube channel. And we have coming up next um, webinars. Um, we have on February 16 at 2 p.m., 10 out of this docs, tips and tricks in 30 minutes. And then we have on February 23rd, real-time rendering with Revit and Enscape at 1 p.m. Um, so yeah, if there's not any more questions, um, please be sure to be checking the MicroCAD website for future webinars. And that concludes this webinar today. Thank you so much, Peter, for attending. Bye-bye, Peter. Bye, Luis. Goodbye. Bye, everyone. Thank you.